What's up, everybody? It's Jeffrey Lyles welcoming you to another edition of Lyles Movie Files. Joining me for this very special episode is the my favorite wrestling commentator, co-host, Jay King. What's going on? A.K.A. Bad News Brown. What is good, Jeff? What's good, everybody, man? Um, look, WrestleMania, wrestling right now, I'm not even going to say WrestleMania. If you're a fan of wrestling, we're in a good spot, folks. So buckle up. Yeah, so we're going to break down WrestleMania 40 the whole th- whole way through. But I have to say, just to start off, normally when I'm doing figure files or movie, I try to find some stuff, some t-shirts to go along with it. And after this show, I kind of felt like I need to get a few wrestling t-shirts. And I haven't felt that way since the Monday Night Wars. And I was firmly team WCW at that point. And I haven't felt like, oh, man, I should go grab a shirt. I was probably closest with, let me get a Bullet Club shirt. Didn't end up doing it. And then, oh, man, a Shield shirt would be cool. But I didn't do that. Now I'm kind of like, you know what? I need to go track down some wrestling T-shirts so I can rock to talk about wrestling. No, I, I agree with that, man. Look. We don't, one thing we don't have anymore, like the great stables, like the great factions that we used to have, because you, you remember the 90s, it was what it was. You, had the, you, you were either DX or, or NWO. <clears throat> and if you were repping either, you had to have one of those shirts. Yeah, absolutely. It's and like, then you had your red and, and black wolf pack, wolf pack, traditional <laughs> white and black Hollywood shirt. You know, it was, it was, it was fun. And I feel like wrestling has gotten fun again. Now, it's it's interesting because this whole storyline since since WrestleMania 39, and and I was telling you this before we got started. WrestleMania 39, night one, I was like, oh man, that was perfect. I was hyped up, excited, like this is it. And then with the main event on night two, I said. I'm so done with WWE. I'm over it. They had this storyline on a platter and they dropped it. They kicked it up, threw it in my face, found a pie, and then went black. And I was so annoyed. And I felt like I hadn't been that annoyed with, with wrestling. I've been largely apathetic toward it. Like, eh, whatever. I was annoyed with this. Not in a, I'm going to tune in tomorrow on, on Raw and see what happens. More like a, yeah, I'm so good. You can't even get this simple, easy layup done. You got to botch it, confuse it, just so you can keep this artificially inflated streak of Roman Reigns going when the Joker shows up every quarter to wrestle to defend the title. That was good. But this this thing, after night one, I said, man, by the time the main event came, I said, I just need everybody to stay injury-free because if, Everything goes the way it's looking like it's going to go. This is going to be one of my favorite WrestleManias. And by the end of night two, I said, this is definitely in my, I don't want to go too ridiculous without, you know, breaking down all the WrestleManias over the years. But I kind of feel like this is easy top seven, probably closer to top five, because it was just like, this was wrestling all the way through. And normally I don't like the 20 hour marathon sessions where I got to spend four days to watch it. I was into watching all this thing. Like, all right, let's keep it going. This I'll, get some, probably, I'll get some caffeine. No, yeah, this was probably one of the most uh, captivating WrestleManias we've seen, I want to say, since CM, to me, the CM Punk days uh, when we, we're talking Punk, we're talking uh, early Cody, we're talking Shield Faction, uh, that those eras, those WrestleManias were the last of those really exciting ones to me. See, I have been such a lapse WWE viewer because I feel like I think what happened for me was I was really digging the Shield, really digging the Wyatt family. Yes, and I felt like when those two teams squared off, and I don't even remember what the car was now, and I'm not going back to track it down. And the fans were getting all, this is awesome. Before it started, I was like, y'all are right. Y'all have been killing this catchphrase. But this time, it was so warranted. And I was like, this is awesome. They built up these two strong factions, and I was so into it. And then 
after that, we're going to have them fight Evolution. They brought Evolution back to fight him. I said, this is amazing. And then, all right, well, we're going to break up the shield. And I was like, what are you all what doing? Are you doing? And I just felt like that was, I, I got why they did it, but I felt like y'all had another year of them being faces, battling mm-hmm. all these makeshift three-man squads, because you did it already. You had Kane and, and the New Age Outlaws. The New Age them. Outlaws. It's, yeah, it was a yeah. mess because they were trying to figure out how to keep that going. Yeah, and it was just like, yo, this is too soon. And I know they were like, Roman, Roman, Roman. It was like, no. And you I just know, felt I, like... I, I, I got a question about that, right? Yeah. And the evolution of Roman Reigns has been fascinating to me because when he turned solo, when he... Like I, there was a period, I don't, he, he, Tim. Correct me if I'm wrong. There was a period where they were trying to make a face out of him, right? Early on, did they? They were trying to see what they did, and it's like, this is why I was getting frustrated with Vince McMahon, and I can say his name. I like everybody else on WWE like, right now. Right, I can say say his name. Um, he didn't learn from mistakes of the past. Like yeah. he had Hogan. And Hogan was like his lightning in a bottle. Kind of larger than life, 80s superhero alongside Schwarzenegger, Stallone, Willis. He was 80s superhero, action hero, just doing it in a wrestling ring, vanquishing all these evil foreigners and mammoth giants and turncoat <laughs> friends. And we got sucked into it. He was so larger than life. Yeah. And then he couldn't figure out how to properly adjust when that audience grew up and it took him a while and he was like "Ah, okay i'm gonna make diesel hulk hogan all over again and diesel got popular with the fans because he didn't take any crap he was cool and he wasn't trying to be cool yeah he just oozed it and you know then vince was like let me put you through the marketing makeover and he scrubbed everything that was cool with diesel you know that Right there, like you said, trying to create the next Hulk Hogan. And it, it, it's crazy. It's tough when you get a cash cow like that because you almost, it, 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 to me, it's like you don't know how to recreate. You're trying to recreate something that you just cannot. And right. that's what Vince was doing with whether it was Diesel, whether it was the Ultimate Warrior uh, year yeah. or two. You know, fast it was just forward. the year for Ultimate Warrior. That was, was just crazy. A year. It wasn't even two, yeah. three years. It was like a year long run of Ultimate Warrior. And he became the biggest thing in wrestling in a year. Well, it Dude, was, it, he had been there since like 88. So yeah. he was slow burning, but he was getting more popular. Yeah. But he burnt out so fast. So and didn't fast. Have, fast. Yeah. He, he was like a, a shooting star. Yeah. And as fast what, as he came. Yeah. Yeah, he was out. Yeah, it was over. Mm-hmm. And then it was the Lex Luthor. Like, he was really shoving. What was that? The SummerSlam? Luger. Lex he Express. Slam. The Lex yeah. Express. Yeah, that somebody had to slam Yokozuna. And, yeah, like, I mean, a big push for him. It's just, you can't recreate it. And the thing was, he had, in, in Diesel, Kevin Nash, he had the next dude who could have kept him going and, and doing, if he had just been willing and able to pivot faster. He didn't. Diesel flopped as a champ. He had to go back to Old Faithful that I don't really want to go with, Bret Hart. And Bret yeah. carried it through until he was like, all right, I got another fresh toy. It's the boy toy, Shawn Michaels. It's the boy I'm going to scrub him of everything that made him cool when he was Intercontinental Champion, and it doesn't matter. And it was like, what are you doing? This is not Shawn Michaels, just like it was at Diesel. I mean, Lex to a certain degree. Like, stop it's- it. You can't reprogram these people who got popular for doing one thing and then make them something else. And he you know, finally, finally got it with, with, with Austin. It was like, you know, I'm not I'm not going to touch anything. I'm just going to leave him yeah. Austin. You know, that was the great part money. about that was the great part about the 90s, that mid-90s era when, you know, in, 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 in introduced Stone Cold, the DX faction, The Rock, all these Taker going through his changes. Uh, Mankind, uh, Kane. Mankind, Kane, Dude, Love, Ken Shamrock. All these personalities kind of came together. It was a, it was such a great and strange time in wrestling because 
you had all of these personalities. We were coming out of this whole cartoony, you know, uh, kid friendly into the the attitude era, which that right there. I mean, wrestling grew up with its generate that current generation of fans. To me, like we were kids of the Hulkamania era. Just take your vitamins, kids, and you know, make sure you do good, brother. Drink your milk and all that. And we became teenagers and adults, and we needed something with an edge, and it gave us that. And we were, we're not just talking about WWF, WE. We're talking about WCW with the NWO, man, all of that, the Diamond Man, DD, DDP, and Goldberg, <laughs> everything that was happening at that time. It was, it was like, I, I, I want to say it was almost like catching lightning in a bottle, but it really wasn't. It's just, it was so organic the way it happened. Nobody was being pushed on you, it felt like. It was this organic shift in how so it wrestling came about. So what's really interesting to me is I feel like we're watching history repeat itself where you needed the Hulkamania era and then yeah. you needed that new generation where everyone has an over-the-top cartoonish gimmick because without it, yeah. the Attitude Era doesn't hit as doesn't hard happen. because it's like it's not as dramatic a shift. It's like, whoa, it's right. not your, it's not your, your daddy's WWF anymore. Oh man, he's cursing. Oh man, she's taking off her top. And it was just like such a big change. It's like, oh man, look what's going on right now on TV. Yes. <laughs> and I feel like we've, we started to see that in this new era. I know they're trying to say it's a triple H era. That's a terrible name. Let's give it something else. And you know, that ain't a bad thing though. Cause I, listen. Cause I, I don't want like it to this. be attached to him. And not, not that I hate on Triple H. I just think we had Attitude Era. Hulkamania Era is different because Hulkamania was the dude who he rebelled was the wrestling. To this. Yeah. Exactly. And we had New Generation Era. We didn't call it the Bret Hart or Diesel or Shawn Michaels' generation. It was Era. We just said the New Generation. So right. I kind of want some, a Ruthless Aggression Era. I want something like that. We had the PG Era that we're leaving now to this. And they call it the Netflix Era. But I just want it to be something more than just one dude. Because if Triple H gets hit by a bus or something, what are they going to do? Right. I'm going to be <laughs> honest with you. I love the fact that we're calling it the Triple H era. Who would have thought that Hunter Hearst Helmsley? If you would have... I flash back to, I guess it was around, what, 92 or 93 when I first saw his introduction in WWE, WF, man. That would have been 95. 95? Yeah, he, he was, I mean, when he was coming out second. there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, so okay, so about 94, 95. When he came out there as Hunter Hearst Helmsley with the whole like talking through the teeth, uh, uh, uh upper crust of society gimmick, I was like, this ain't gonna last at all. <laughs> to watch his evolution to become like the all time heel because Triple H to me does not get his credit as that. Like, when we're naming the top heels of all time, people tend to leave Triple H off of that list. I think for him, the problem was they had in the attitude era two of the all time. Like you can't do a wrestling Mount Rushmore without leaving off Stone Cold and Rock. Now you can say, Oh, somebody's better technical wrestler, whatever, but in terms of hey, what's who's who's wrestling? What's who which, which guy would you say defines wrestling? You're not gonna go far without saying the rock, you're not gonna go far without saying Stone Cold. Right. And Triple H kept trying to position himself like I'm on this mountain too. And I think people resented that. He was like, listen, you just need to be the bad guy that they beat up. And maybe you outsmart him for a little while. You, 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 you know, do a little twirl of your mustache, your goatee. <laughs> You're not there on their level. And I think, and, and anytime they weren't around, and I think especially when he was a champ without either of them around in 2002 and three, he was obnoxious. Oh, there's somebody else from WCW I haven't beaten? I want to beat them now. And he had lost because he had torn his quads. He was like ballooned up Triple H. He couldn't yep. move as well as he did. But all he was doing was squashing everybody from Booker T to Rob Van Dam. It was just like, stop see, it, dude. But see, the, Jeff, that right there is a part of his allure as a heel to me because he was so unlikable because of these things. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And I, but I, don't I don't think want he, my... You know, he was he was terrible in that sense because you knew behind the scenes he was controlling so much. I'm like, ah. 
But and they had pulled that, so much of the curtain with the attitude oh, yeah. that they couldn't close it back and go, no, no, Triple H isn't doing anything. It was like, oh, no, that we two faces out of the one. tube. We, there's oh, yeah, no way you get that back in, you know. And once you find those things out, for me, that's what made him a better heel. It wasn't the product in the in, in, on the mat. It was what you knew behind the scenes. He's, he's dating the <laughs> boss's daughter. He's calling his own shots. This guy is he detest him, and that what that's part of what made him a great heel to me because you knew these things, and he basked in it. He didn't try to act like oh these things aren't happening. I'm just you know no. He he enjoyed the spoils of it, and I loved it. You know, I I really liked him as a heel. I thought he was so good because, you know, up until WrestleMania 2000, the heel never won in the main event. And when he won, I said, you know what? That dude had killed it. He had worked really hard. He earned it. He was in great matches after great matches. When he tore his quad and came back and tried to take that spot all over again, like, nah, 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 dude. Yeah, Not that same cat. And You don't just get to slip right in here because I just ugh, I hated that run, the post quad era Triple H, because pre quad era I would have had no problem with him running through oh, everybody because yeah. he was really good in the ring. Those All his back stage stuff was awesome. He cut great promos, but I'm like, listen, you might have been a ten before. Now you're like a seven. So that still thinks you're a ten. Get out of here because there were you know there were people who were <laughs> at the ten level at that point. So. Anyway, enough rehashing about the past, but I do want to say, what, what, on to your point, one of the best things about this era is that Triple H has learned from his mistakes of the past. And Absolutely. there were so many things where I was like, this is what he did when he was in this position where he dropped the ball and irritated me. But now behind the scenes, in the same position, he's making the better call. And the product is so much better because so much of it. better. All right, so there's the two nights of WrestleMania. Let, let's go through this thing. Um, <laughs> and we were talking about the, the previous WrestleManias, and I was like, dude, I don't even remember the main events of these WrestleManias over the last few years. The only one I remember was last year with Cody yeah. versus Roman Reigns. We're back right. all over again. And the Usos versus KO and Sami Zayn. I felt like such a big moment. Only to be deflated, <laughs> and they just squashed it. And I was swearing off WWE. And they've slowly got me back into it because my traditional viewing of WWE in the last five years has been I like Survivor Series, I like the elimination format. I'll watch that, then I'll peace out until the Royal Rumble. All right, who's gonna be pointing to the side of then? All right, maybe I'll watch Elimination Chamber to see who's gonna fight the other champion, and then I'll watch. Or pay more attention, reading recaps like my boy Scott Keith, shout out Blog of Doom. And then I'm like, all right, cool, I'm ready for WrestleMania. I watch the Raw after WrestleMania, and I'm out for a long time. Maybe I'll watch SummerSlam. Yeah, because it just it's never held my interest. And I'm like, yeah, okay, Roman's still winning. Ha! (laughs) I I don't miss anything. (laughs) And I was just, I remember feeling so annoyed last year. After Cody sit in the ring, how did this happen? I'm like, dude, I'm with you. I can't believe they had this moment. And he just dropped it. And I swear, if things did not happen the way, because they got so lucky, like they would, I would have been calling that the worst booking decision they've ever made for WrestleMania if this year didn't come through. And they got lucky it all came together, but it did, which worked out so much better for us. All right, so night one, WrestleMania. And I like the beginning. I thought the opening video was really cool. And it's always fun with that kind of stuff. I'm like, who's missing? But it looked like everybody was in the little star yeah. constellations in the sky. I was like, oh, there's Bruno. Really nice. Really nice. Stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, all right, we get the breakdown. We get Meek Mill going through everything. I like that little video. And I really loved the face-offs they were doing in the opening video where it's like they're walking up to each other. They had that NFL Monday okay. night football kind of or Sunday night football thing. It's like, yeah, this is cool. Quick sidebar. And, yeah, Given we- all the controversy with Diddy and Meek Mill, <laughs> I, I really thought they were going to sidestep that and say, uh, the roots. Uh, <laughs> but they needed that energy, right? They needed They did. You get a Philly guy and, you know, we, we yeah. got it. So it worked out. 
So Triple H comes and welcomes us to WrestleMania. A little nod to Vince McMahon going, welcome to WrestleMania. It's a holy signal. We're not mentioning that dude anymore. No bathroom breaks. <laughs> this is the Triple H run. We're not doing that kind of stuff anymore. So um, we get our opening match, Becky Lynch versus Rhea Ripley. And what I love about WrestleMania time is you can be a totally lapsed fan like me. The video packages catch you up to speed. It's been the first WrestleMania in several years where I haven't relied on the video packages. I've been watching YouTube because I'm right. interested. I'm like, oh, there's a new video of what happened tonight on Raw. Let me watch all these highlights. And they're doing a great job of it now where it's like, here's a full segment. Thank you. Good. I don't need to see it clipped to death. I want to watch the full 15 minutes to 20 minutes. And they had a great build with Rhea going your little daughter is going to be watching me and calling me mommy i'm like oh shoot yeah and it was i thought it was ironic with this one where michael cole's playing michael cole the weatherman with the doppler radar and <laughs> it's really cold out here folks i'm like i don't think you need to tell anyone how cold it yeah, is i don't think you need to tell anybody <laughs> how cold it is like look around read the <laughs> arena they were like god i don't know i'm like there were Snuggies out there, Parkers. It was cold. Right. We we know. This this is why Philly will not host the Super Bowl, among other reasons. But yeah, this this is why they're never going to host the Super Bowl. How about throw a dome up there? So, what what do you think about this match? Because I felt like we're starting to see Becky in this part of her career where she is no longer ascending. She is kind of on this she level out plane. And now she's slowly making the descent down. And here, next generation, we saw her last year losing to Bianca Belair. And now this year, it's to Rhea Ripley. So it's, I'm about to go down. The man is about to peace out at some point. And I'm, I'm, I've given my seal of approval. I've passed the torch to both of these two in consecutive WrestleManias. I'm out. Question for you: How old is Becky Lynch? She can't be older than thirty-five. Well, you know, she just had a, a baby girl, and I think she's in the. I want to spend more time with my kid. I don't want to take her all around. Probably so she's thirty-seven, and oh, she just 37. turned thirty-seven oh, yeah, back so. January thirtieth. Well, she looks good. Um, not to you know, not to use that as something, but to say, saying that to say she doesn't, she hasn't aged. She doesn't look like, why others. are you still here? Yeah, and, that, and that's not from the face. That's from the way she moves and performs. Oh, yeah, like yeah, Her yeah. body isn't telling a story on her yet, right? So that's why I assume she was still a woman in her early 30s or so. Um, I, It's been that you said that, and I did not know that she had a, a kid earlier. Or what? Or she had a baby, what, in the last she's few like months? Recently. So? Yeah. Oh, oh, no, yeah. I mean, she's around. I mean... I don't know if she's a year yet, but she's still oh, yeah, very no. freshly baby. And we may not we... see her for a while. Mm -hmm. That's what, and that's what, when looking at the match, I said, you know what? I, I feel like she's trying to take something off. She's selling Rhea a lot. And well, she also has way. strep throat. I didn't know that either. Yeah. I so that, that was either. some of it. <laughs> so there's, there's all of these things, right? So with that said, um, Everything that I, everything that we saw from that match, yeah, that makes sense. It makes more and more sense because um, you know the Rhea sell her stars rising. There's no there's no doubt about that. Um, and there were a couple of moments in there where you see, okay, like that she's the powerhouse. She's that mix of uh, 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 everything the, the the power, the the speed, the ability, the personality. She's got all of it, right? She's got that total package. And right now, she's like the closest thing I've seen to 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 China, and since China, you know, she's where, better than China in terms of wrestling. Well, in terms of wrestling, yeah, but as as far as that intimidation factor, like you look at China and be like, man, she can kick my ass, like that too. <laughs> like, I think China me? really benefited from being in a time period where no one else looked like her. Like no one, she was just. She had the shoulders, and she looked like when she was laying on Trap those forearms. In yeah. it was like, sheesh. Yeah, and, China would be a problem. Yeah, for anyone. Right. She was laying it in the dudes, and they were acting like, "Oh man, she killed me with a cannon shot." Yeah, and Rhea's giving me the same thing. Like she's 
she's got power, man, and 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 she's got presence. So it makes sense. She does have a presence. Her time. Yeah, she's definitely got a presence. I'm curious how long they're gonna keep her healed because it feels like the fans love her. And I that's my one thing with her. It's like yeah, I, want my, only... I want my heels to be heels. And I don't yeah. want my faces, I want my faces to get cheered. And she is just like I don't I don't think that I don't know if they care, but I don't want my traditional plucky hero Becky Lynch to be getting out cheered yeah. by Rhea, who's all about I'm just mommy. I feel like she does a little bit too much playing to the crowd and like, look she what does, I'm doing. That's so cool. But that's a part of the appeal and eventually that'll wear out, you know, and I think the only way to keep it fresh for, for her is they're going to have to, of course, anti-hero her. She's going to have to take some edge off. Um, but at the same time, is that what we is that what the people really want? You know, they they've gotten kind of used to this, you know, and, and that business, you, your, your gimmicks get stale. So you reinvent yourself and does it work out? And not everybody can do that. Um, for I think her, they can separate her from Judgment Day and let I think her they could. beat up all the bad guys for a while because she's she's over. She's like the most over, popular yeah. woman on the roster and. Yeah. It's like just let her, let her be a, a full on face. You don't have to change anything else. Mm, I mean, let her just, be. just let her do her thing, and yep. she's just changing who she's fighting. Change who she fights, take the edge off an alliance or, or, or one on one alliance or two, and boom, there you have it. She's already yeah. the biggest thing in, in 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 the ladies' division, so you know, For sure, her yeah. star is only going to rise from that to me. Right. All right. So then we had the tag team title match and a ladder match, and we knew basically from the start. Where when where they have two ladder rungs up and Judgment Day is the defending unified champs, then they're not walking out of here with either Raw or SmackDown titles. Like, all right, who's gonna be the new champs? We've got Judgment Day, Finn and Damian Priest. We got Awesome Truth and Michael Cole notes they've never won the world tag titles. Truth got kicked out because he was trying to be cool and be a member of Judgment Day. We got DIY in their very first WrestleMania rocking the dx homage looks we got new day and i thought it was funny because they did note that creed was rocking the apollo creed gear you know that was, used to be his old gimmick consequences creed he rocked that whole you know apollo creed look they didn't catch that kofi was dressed like rocky it was like he's wearing the black and gold y'all y'all don't seem like you get it and then we had austin theory and grayson waller and the new catch republic what's your thoughts on this one it was busy. <laughs> it was definitely busy. <laughs> it was one of those matches where I was like, I really want to be into this, but it's super busy. And there was, I'm not going to call them botches. There was like a couple, of, like one or two things that didn't go right. And you can see it uh, because there was so much going on and it almost felt, uh, I don't know. It, it almost felt like they were trying too hard to give us an amazing match, but it was it was really busy. And albeit it was it was a good match, it could have been better. I think if you would have dropped one of the teams, maybe even two. So I, I had this this bad habit when I'm a little bit disappointed with modern day wrestling. Going back to my my collection, my video collection, and watching some old stuff. So I watched this 1979, 1980 match between Bob Backlund and Ken Patera. It was a Texas death match. And wow, the match had been going on for so long. And I was like, why do they even bother calling this a Texas death match? They're just having a regular match. And then like the 15 minute mark, they started doing stuff outside. I'm like, oh, oh. And it meant so much more because when they started going to that next level with the violence and doing extra stuff, like the chairs, I was like, oh. And I felt like this match, it was like maybe 30 seconds before they started reaching for the ladder. I'm like, no more. Come on. What are we doing? And I wanted to see like one team. I didn't really care who. I just wanted to see them take everybody out like normal. And then yeah. one of them just guard around the ladder, stopping everybody while their partner grabs a set of titles. I feel like in that kind of thing where there's two ladders on either side, I hated the fact that they had a ladder set up in the middle. Like, come in the on. middle. You, know, you like, can't what reach. Are you doing? Like, you can't reach. What are you doing? Like, we don't that. need this. 
scale yeah. it back some. I mean, I, I I love when the ambition's there. You want to do something that's going to get the oohs and ahs and, you know, create something that we haven't seen this. Right? Yeah, but sometimes we don't need to see it. What we need is something a little scaled back and right to the point. <laughs> they were doing stuff like, oh, my gosh, what are yeah. you doing? Like, what are you doing like, and why? We don't need right. that. Yeah, I'm like, oh, it's no funny because I don't, I feel like I've gotten older watching this stuff. Like, no, don't do that. Yeah, like, come on, don't don't hurt yourself for entertainment. Yeah, yeah no. it's like this. This, <laughs> this, I don't think what you're doing makes sense. Don't hurt yeah. yourself with something that I think is dumb. It doesn't make any sense. So that that's yeah. always my thing. Like, I don't think that was a good move for you. But then they just go crazier. So Grayson Waller. Austin Theory get one set of titles and taking in the SmackDown. So it was who's going to win the Raw set. And I love this one because there are lots of teams. I was like, all right, they could be cool to win. They could be cool. Yeah. But then they put the focus on, on truth. And that dude is really funny. I'm just thinking he's been around since 98 in the WWF. And he had a little stint in TNA for a while. Rocked it as the truth. But he has been great. In this role of just this kind of clueless random dude who's just making up wild stuff, like John Cena was his childhood hero. That is hilarious. You know, it's hilarious because at, you watch Truth all these years, right? And he is always one of the funniest guys that they have to put out there. I feel like the best is still yet to come. I want to see, like, I've been wanting to see him do, and I think at one point in time they had him doing it, but like these VNS, like the Brutus the Barber Beefcake used to do, where they come to the barber shop. Yeah, like I want to see Truth have segments like that in the middle of the shows. <laughs> and I, I really do feel like they're missing the mark on that. Bring that back. He Bring could that do back. It. He could do it. He's very funny, very, very entertaining. I mean, he did a little Jimmy, and then when he and, and Miz were like heels of Awesome Truth taking on The Rock and Cena, I was like, what are they, these, these two doing? But then somehow they made it sort of credible, at least just to get run through by him. And, yeah. you know, the whole thing was Truth was, you know, Chuck was just wild, asking for the hot tag in a ladder match. I'm like, man, he just, <laughs> he understands how to be entertaining. And he yes, hasn't he stopped. And I love that the match culminated with him fighting off Judgment Day. These dudes who he was just trying to be cool with and say, hey, I want to be part of the crew. And they just totally beat him up and pumped him out. And he defended his buddy Miz. And Miz was like, you know, redeemed himself being a good guy again. And they get rewarded with the tag titles. I feel like there were lots of teams that could have won and I've been fine with. But seeing them celebrate, it was like, that was cool. That was a good moment. And I feel like in the last few WrestleManias, it's been, hey, let's create a manufactured WrestleMania moment, trademark. Yeah. This felt way more organic, and it's like, yeah, that's cool. That was cool. That, Like you said, that felt like an organic moment. Um, and even if the run is short-lived, it'll be damn entertaining, and that's what they need. That's what you need. You need entertaining people holding titles. You need folks that you can get... You know, it's one thing to be intimidating or, or, or brooding, whatever. You need laugh factor. You need people who are fun to watch and listen to. And this is what you have with these two. Mm hmm. So they get to go, awesome, true. Exactly. What's up? Yeah. So that that that's good. You need a you need your cast to be varied. It can't everybody everybody can't be stone cold. Yeah. You, you've got to have your mankinds, your rocks. Your Crash Hollies, the Hardys, Edge and Christian. You gotta Dudley do that. Boys. You, yeah. you need these characters. You need these people. Brutus the again, Brutus <laughs> the Barber Beefcake. Who I, I, I hate to get on a, a rant about Brutus, but I was I was watching some old footage of him the other day, and I was like, dude, that guy took lemons and made lemonade. <laughs> when they split him up from Greg Valentine, we, where are they going with this? And he absolutely killed it as as Brutus the Barber Beefcake. He never did. Get, never gets his proper due in my in, in my opinion for that. They just did a one of those any biographies on him. So if you haven't watched it, that might be fun to check out. Oh really? Yeah. In this video, oh, yeah. yeah, that I've um put together, he and Hogan were in Memphis, and 
you know, this this is before either of them feel comfortable in front of the camera. So Beefcake, you know, he's Ed Boulder. Is he's Hogan's or Terry Boulder's little brother. And he's got this long blonde hair, got the handlebar mustache going to, and he can't talk at all. It's like <laughs> it's so funny. And then Hogan comes out there and he's not he's all in. Well, you know, we gotta well, do know. this. Like it's hilarious. Yeah, pre Hawkamania so Hogan is hilarious because he's just it, oh my god. He has no idea. And it's just funny. Yeah. Yeah. So next up, we get a great video recapping Rey Mysterio and Andrade versus Dominic Mysterio and Santos Escobar. And I've been a fan of Santos Escobar since Lucha Underground. He's King Cuerno pulling the arrow back, doing the thing. And it's so cool seeing how many of these Lucha Underground dudes are now featured in both AEW and WWE. In some cases, I guess there's a few running around in ROH and in Impact or TNA because we're back to TNA again. So it's really, I was looking forward to this one more than most modern day Ray Mysterio matches. Ray, I'm always like, Ray's cool. I'm kind of tired of seeing him in the spotlight, but he's still pulling off those moves nice and crisp. Yeah. You really hate. You can't. This is a nearly 50 year old man still putting his body on the line in every match. And. My hat's my hat will always go off to Rey Mysterio, uh, for the obvious reasons. He gave us so many great matches and so many great moves and, and jaw dropping moments. And the fact that he's still doing it and his son is out there with him that's what made it so cool. That's what makes it so cool, right? And to see that match, that ma- that's to me what made it so. It wasn't a great. It wasn't great. It's not the greatest match you ever see, but that's what made it great for me. I think Dom plays an excellent little piece of crap character. Yes, he <laughs> like he to weasel. me is a classic heel. He's he just you know, he is the most weaselly little man. I just want to smack you when I see you because I know <laughs> I can beat you. Kind of character, and I feel like those are the best heels. Like they are. You get, a, you get your monsters like Bundy or Sid, Bam Bam, Diesel, but the best ones. Or that Telly Blanchard, the Buddy Roberts. I don't know about these other cats, but you, I could whoop any day of the week. And Dom is like, ah, I got you right now, so I don't even need to go to a gym. I got you. And then he does such a great job playing that scummy punk. Yes, he does. And look, I you named some all-time weasels, but and that's the thing about it. You look at Dom and you see that he knows how to facilitate that role. He knows how to be that guy, and I love it. I yeah, love it. You know, not everybody's so gonna be six foot nine, six ten. Oh, he's like, look, I don't have to be that guy in order to make you hate me. In order to be the, your heel, I can be just who I am and, and, and give off that same energy. I, I am a weasel and you want to see me fail. Yeah, in fact, you want to punch me in the face. That, and I think that's that means love. more. That, like, yep. that character is way more interesting than the guy who's, I'm the coolest bad guy around. Kind of like how I feel about Rhea. It's like, yeah, you're cool, but be a cool face or be a low down, dirty dog like Dom. It's like, you know, this guy has value. well, that is the other part of Rhea's appeal, too. She's easy on the eyes and she has that, like, t- not I can't even call it tough, like, golf girl. It's like there's an element of danger with her that you look at, you're like, yeah, like, it's it's <laughs> for guys, you're like, it's that element of danger. I, I can tame like, her, yeah, yeah, like, I, yeah, no, you can't. <laughs> it, it, you're not guess, gonna be able to. Yeah, you're not gonna be able to, don't try. Um, he's not baking you a dozen because he's not baking you cookies anytime soon. So, Ooh, no, I, 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 yeah, I think for us, it's like for men, it's like, are you seeing you're like, oh man, she's yeah, she's tough, she's strong, and 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 the look, you know, that 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 speaks to all of those things. And it's probably one of the like guys, like for for men, uh, guys want to be him, girls want to date him. It's kind of probably, it, I'm sure it's the same thing for her, you know. Yeah, probably guys, girls want to date her too. Guys, yeah, probably <laughs> girls want to date her too. You know, guys want to date her. Girls want to date her. Girls want to be like her. You know, she's got that tough girl element. She's still feminine with it. You know, and she's got her look. You know, that dangerous goth girl tattoo part. Like you can see her 
you walk into like well-known tattoo parlor, you could totally see her in there getting a tattoo or giving a tattoo and just intimidating <laughs> the hell, like staring lasers through you, like looking into your soul as you right. walk into the place. You could see that. <laughs> Let me look away. This so this, this match was whatever. I did the Joaquin Wilds like dive or the springboard. They just catapulted him. He got so much air on that. It's like, jeez. Yeah. And the replay I thought did a better job because I mean I, the yeah. first shot of it was cool, but seeing him coming over to him was like, whoa. Yeah. Yeah. And everybody I thought was really good. Andrade, I feel, has been underutilized. He was underutilized in AEW. I think coming back to WWE, he's gonna get a better spotlight. Maybe they'll they'll split him off, him and Zelina. They can do their thing and kind of have a sort of LWO because I feel like Harlito's about to turn the way they were talking about him and no turn. So I was like, all right, we'll get this later. I did think it was kind of weird that they decided to show two Philadelphia Eagles coming out to help. I was like, anyway, okay. Yeah. It, what better way to work the Eagles into this man, into the, you know, into this thing than something like that, you know? They had to do it. I was just glad they did it in this match because it needed it. Yeah, okay. You know, I, I mean, it was nice to see the Eagles on the winning side. <laughs> the All right, then we get the, our re our, our final match here with Jay Uso and Jimmy Uso, the Battle of the Usos. Love the video. Love how they were setting it up with them facing each other, their backs yeah. turning each other. Production on that was awesome. I love watching Jay with his yeet, yeet. coming through, and the, the crowd was into it. Like they were rocking Cole and McAfee were doing the thing. I feel like this match was kind of there. And I'm not sure if it's just because it's just watching the two who are pretty much interchangeable in their matches when they were doing the tag team going against each other. Maybe it would have been like the same thing as watching Axe versus Smash if they decided to split demolition up midway through. Or I mean, we did get the Rockers, but I felt like the Rockers have more intensity and hatred during their feud. Yeah. And I just felt like this was a manufacture. Right. Yeah, I mean, like, you kind of understood where it was, but I didn't feel like they had any hatred. No, it, it, and Jeff, that's, that was my thing about it. We've watched them go through, since this whole Bloodline faction started, we've watched them go through these ups and downs before. We've watched these two hate each other before. It's like two brothers that just, it's like if you, for example, at, what, what, what is it, the uh, Boondock Saints? Yeah. If the two brothers in that movie started fighting with each other and we happened to be hanging out with them, you wouldn't even bat an eyelash. Like, whoa, 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 man, what are you guys doing? No, you just let them fight it out there. Drunk. There they go again. <laughs> they, they'll, be, they'll be singing over a pint tomorrow. Let's let them fight it out, whatever. <laughs> and that's how it felt with this. Yeah, and I think they placed it smartly in the show because it was like, all right, cool. I did feel like it was going on way too long. What was this, 11.09? And somehow, <laughs> just over 10 minutes still felt too long. It yeah. Maybe it should have been like the, oh, man, he beat him in five minutes kind of thing as opposed to let's make a city epic that's not an epic. It is yeah. whatever. And I feel yeah, like that's... that was probably the weakest one of the show for me. But go ahead. No, it was. No, I agree 100%. That was the weakest match of the show. Um, and I told you how I felt about it. Um, and it, and you're right. It could have been one of those, look, just just, just come out there. One of you just bash the hell out of uh, the other and let's just get this thing over with. Um, I think what probably would have and could have helped it if <clears throat> either some interference by either The Rock or Roman or even Seiko could have came out there. You yeah, know, we just need a solo. <laughs> Yeah, we just need a solo pop and that, let that be that. And yeah. it would have been like a, a to me that would have added like the start, this is the start of something else, you know. Now there's really bad blood being established, and it could have been J versus uh, you know what I mean? Yeah. Push was, that. Yeah, because I feel like he was fighting them. When did he fight Roman for the belt? Like last year that after did. he split from him. And I feel like too much time has gone for them to have their big first matchup. I know they yeah. were trying to save it for WrestleMania, but they kind of needed the times and stuff a little bit differently. Either way, 
this match was whatever. I'm not going to really remember this later on. No. I think years later about WrestleMania 40, <laughs> but you know, it's whatever. Next it's up, we, yeah, we got Naomi, Bianca Belair, and Jade Cargo versus Damage Control. And I've, I've been raving and enjoying the production elements of what they're doing with the camera work. That used to annoy me so yeah. much where, you know, somebody would stomp on somebody five times and we get 40 camera cuts. Like, ah, stop it. Just let me, let me, let me count on myself. Let me watch somebody get stomped. I don't need you being so hyperactive with the camera edits. Yeah. And they're doing some really cool stuff. And the entrances of both teams was cool. Damage control is coming out. And Kira, Kira. Asuka and Carrie are dancing on either side and Dakota Kai's in the middle. And it just look cool with the presentation. And then we get like the superhero squad coming through <laughs> elevator. Got Jade, Naomi. I kind of missed her going all glow in the dark with her entrance. Yeah. I'm not really sure what she was doing with that attire. And then we get Bianca Belair. She's got like a Cyclops visor where she can't see how far she spitted her, her, her ponies. <laughs> That was funny because it was like, whoa, watch out. <laughs> this one, this was all about, all right, we're going to have a little fun, and then we're going to tag in Jade, and Jade's going to demolish him. And, <laughs> and I feel like they have done so well with Jade because they're not putting her out there too much. I feel like that was a problem AEW had. It was, yeah. we've got this goldberg s type character, but we're letting her do these long-winded promos and aren't saying anything. We have no direction for her, and we're letting her wrestle in these matches way too long and it's people that don't need to give her that much go. This one, she's sitting on the side, patiently waiting her turn. Naomi and bon Bianca are doing their thing against damage control. She finally comes in and obliterates them. And we've got stories that come out of this. We put Naomi and Jade as a tag team going against the Kabuki Warriors. Bianca and Jade going against them, maybe let them have like a eight month reign. And then something happens. We get Bianca versus Jade. I feel like that's definitely a high profile matcher. We put either one of them against Rhea, but I mean, there are lots of opportunities and it doesn't matter what happens. Exactly. You got so many ways you can go with this. I personally would like to see a uh, Jade Bianca tag duo that just rough i mean wreck shot for months right yeah and then jade versus Rhea, because i'm gonna tell you something that is a match you want to see just based on the physicality of these two the strength of these two the look everything about it says this would be this could main event a pay-per-view that could main event you do it right you main event a pay-per-view in 2025 with them two going for the title that's me See, I I wonder if Jade can get there. I know she's got the physical presence. She looks like a star. Like, yeah, I remember during the pandemic world. era of AEW, and they would have the wrestlers in the stands. And when they started panning, then Jade was like, "Who is this?" Who is this? She yeah. stood out, yeah. even doing a applauding for everybody. Else. She's a model yeah. character. She's drawn, yeah. you know, in real life, and it's just like. Man, so I don't. I feel like they need whatever the equivalent of the Intercontinental Title is for her, <clears throat> and put Bianca versus Rhea. Let them go up top for a while while Jay continues to elevate, beat up everybody else. Because I feel like they still have money with Bianca and Rhea from oh, yeah. their days in oh, yeah. NXT, and Bianca's ready to go right now. Yeah. Now I don't know if I necessarily want to see her get put up to lose and rather than go against each other where Bianca wins, but we see, have to lose the, to somebody. But see, that's the beauty of it, which you can create so many storylines from that. So let's say that happens um, just as you suggested and she loses, but then Jade gets her match, beats her. And then the animosity starts between that alliance you yeah. know what I mean? That, that you mm -hmm. can go so many avenues with that, man. So it's one of those things. I'm looking forward to see how they do it. It's just one. It's just, just don't mess this up for us, and yeah. don't mess this up for yourselves because you got a golden opportunity to uh, make something epic here with the women's division, which is stronger than it's ever been. By the way, you know. 
I, I feel like that would never take much <laughs> because it was, I feel like it, it, you know, these old tapes, they're like, Hey, we've got the girls coming to the arena. Like, oh, oh, okay. The girls are coming. Okay. Uh, it, it was, it, it, it's fabulous moolah. Versus yeah, no. Leilani Kai. Like, okay, great. <clears guys. throat> yeah. <clears throat> no, it's, you got, you know, not to go on that rant, but just look at what happened, you know, over the last few, the last week with the ladies tournament in the NCAA. More entertaining than the men's tournament. Drawing big numbers. It, you embrace what you have right now. We've got some phenomenal athletes in 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 in, 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 in women's sports. Man, stop saying or, or limiting these women and their ability to do anything. Give them the sign. Let them shine. Let them go. Uh, WWE should take notes from what happened in the NCAA. You have a amazing roster right now, and it's probably only going to get better. It's only going to get better. Oh yeah. Let I mean, them let them roll, man. It's <clears throat> fine. One last thing on the tournament. What was up with the 2 p.m. championship game? Yeah, that's stupid. Uh, you know, and look, <laughs> <laughs> and it's not like you're competing with right. the, the with anything else. What was the big draw of the day other than that? WrestleMania. The, you like, WrestleMania. Started at six or seven. Yeah, like, wow. and you have Two WrestleMania, o'clock? but WrestleMania is on Peacock, right? Yeah. You're not competing with anything else across the cable or network no. landscape. Show this thing at 7 p.m. if anything else. Great. 7 p.m. 8 p.m. You want to show it early, do it then. Yes. Yeah. It's wow. Sunday, 7 p.m. 8 p.m. Start time. Yeah. Go nuts. All right. Yeah. So then we get our intercontinental championship match. And I feel like this was probably the probably the thing that it was like, all right, which way are they gonna go? This Gunther has had the title, the intercontinental championship longer than anybody else. Because he could talk to you something, man. And like he's years. actually defended his title, unlike Roman. So they yes, could be like, oh, yeah, because I'm everything that I watch or read, oh, God, there's defending his title again. Okay. Unlike Roman, who, where is he? Who knows? And then they built up Sami Zayn so perfect. I don't know if I could beat him. I don't know. I don't know. And he's got Chad Gable helping him out, trying to get his mojo back. And, hey, he's in the back, and he's talking to his wife and son, and and they do this great tracking shot where they're just following him walk up into the back and he's getting ready and he sees Kevin Owens and he's like, go get him. Like, yes. Well, like they hit all the moments they needed to. Sammy yeah. comes out in his theme song. It's one of the few they've not felt the need to change and tinker and switch because his theme song is awesome. It fits his character perfectly. Yeah. It gets you hyped up and he's ready. Gunther comes through and he's like, if he dies, he dies uh, and <laughs> slaps the chops. Ow. This one was a nice David versus Goliath match. And it's it's so amazing that Sami Zayn can headline WrestleMania night one last year, win the tag titles, and somehow being the ultimate underdog. And he challenged Roman Reigns for the world title yeah. a year ago. And he's still, can he get it done? He's an underdog. And they're like, well, here we go. We got you on covering some of these any gaps that you think. He's doubting himself after he lost to Roman Reigns and all 80 members of the bloodline. And here he <laughs> is facing the most unstoppable intercontinental champ ever. And that match was so good, so hard hitting. Gunther's talking trash to Sammy's wife. Look at him. And Look he's at like, them. oh, man. All right, I'm like. I don't just thinking to myself, Gunther there's gets no it, way he does. There's no way they can do this match and not have Sammy win. I mean, Sorry, we, got a dog, we got a dog sighting. Sorry. Everybody. Here's another one. But man, they asked, they, they came through and I was like, nah, Sammy's got it. It was like, yes. I felt like, you know, you watch wrestling these days and they do these super finisher moves. And it's like, how is this not good? He did a brain buster on the turnbuckle. Like, Listen, <laughs> this needs to end the match. And then it, and it hit it two of his finishers. And that was, it was like, thank you. I don't need to see Gunther going up and doing her Karanas after taking a brain buster on the turnbuckle. And <laughs> he won. It felt like a huge moment again. Yeah. All you have to do is cultivate the story, water it a little bit, water some more, let it grow. And like, bam. The fans 
will love this every time. It's you, the wheel is already done. It's the perfected. Wheel is- Done, man. All you have to do is just pull it up from the factory again, put it on the car. It's good to hey, go. At best, you put some pretty spokes on it, and that's it. Yeah. You gotta, there's no, yeah, there's nothing else you got to do. And this is a, the Triple H era, understanding these tried and true things, man. It's like when you're cooking. Look, you can add the whole, you can all these hybrid spices that you find, these new and, 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 and complex mixtures and all of that. Hey, salt, pepper. Rosemary thyme, all these things you can use in system. <laughs> somebody put meat on fire or fire to meat. It, they just work. You, you, you got your good, you got your bad, you build your story from there. When it's time, people will, will gravitate toward it because you cultivated something here. And it just it just that, works. That smells good. Or yeah. as Rock would say, can you smell it? Can yes. Smell it? I want it. <laughs> That's good cool. cool. And look, kudos to Gunther, man. He's been a hell of a heel, in my opinion. He gets oh, it. He's he, great. Yeah, he's he great. gets it. Now, let me ask you this. Does this lead way to him competing at the next tier? I think so. I mean, he, he could only – he had to lose. I feel like they're going to have to give him maybe a buffer feud or two and then say, like, SummerSlam, he challenges Cody. Because, you know, in the last two Royal Rumbles, Cody's eliminated him. So yeah. you've got that ready-made storyline. Maybe Gunther injures Cody. So Cody has to take a month or two off before he can recover from yeah. the big match against Gunther. Because Gunther's I- that kind of character where you can just – have him be the bully he's one of the few cases where him trimming down and cutting his weight kind of works against him a little bit to me because i love when he's just this big beefy meaty dude where it's like oh my gosh he looks ridiculous like he <laughs> would kill like, you he's like a, he looked like uh uh in monsters inc billy crystal's character because he has really long arms and legs and his right. torso was just kind of stout. He looked crazy. Yeah, man. <laughs> it's like, this dude looks like he would hurt with everything. And, yeah. and I hear the impact and all that stuff. And I'm like, man, I kind of wish I wish he didn't care about his health so much and let himself get backed up to being kind of bulky again. But yeah. Gunther's good. He gets it. Be, be a human potato, man. Be a human yeah, loaf. You know? It works for you. It works. It works. It doesn't work for everybody. But for no. Him, yeah. Yeah. Because it, it leans harder into his bully persona. Yeah, yeah. All right, so then we get the main event for night one. The bloodline. Roman Reigns and the final boss, The Rock versus Cody and Seth Rollins. And Cody comes out and he's just super, super baby face. Seth Rollins comes out and Rollins, man, I can't even describe what this dude is wearing. Cole's like, I think he's got a hat on his side. It's like he is. I'm trying to figure out if he was going his old boy from Strawberry Shortcake. And he's just, I love that he just wears the most ridiculous stuff. I'm like, what is he doing? Wow, this is crazy. And then we get Rock coming out like a freaking video game character with the Brahma Bull in flames. Like, this production is amazing. amazing. Sitting here with the People's Champ title, flames around like, Oh, it's like, oh man, this is like how we feel when you reach that point in the game. It's like, hey, the, look, have I, I saved only enough? My eyes when you said final boss because he's leaned into it and it's working. It's it oh, works so hard, man. Especially for that intro, I was like, yeah, he's <laughs> he's, he's the final boss, and I hate right. to admit it. Like, I hate to admit that. Yeah. So, like, I love the whole deal with that. All right, so then we get the main event and and it's going and i feel like it, it took the nice little escalation like i read some people oh, i was taking too long like i don't care it was 44 minutes <laughs> it's 44 minutes I, it's main event i mean you know and i've watched so many aw matches where they'll do that on a dynamite or collision or you know they're like 20 minutes for nothing I felt like this one was like right, we're building we're building we're building in the first half you don't need to pay attention to as closely but then when it got to that next level, that next oh, gear yeah. was like, I loved how they treated Seth and Cody like a team desperate to yeah. win. Yeah. Like they were just like, oh, let me help here and stop him from getting it. Like when they when they hit the spear, yeah. when, the spear. When, when Seth crisscrossed and tackled Cody so yeah. he would avoid getting speared. And then Rock took it. 
I was like, oh, that was perfect yeah. in time. And Rock is telling the ref, I'm going to fire you if you call a count out. Don't F with the fire. I was like, yeah, Rock, yeah. tell him, dude. <laughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> no, I was so hyped for that because it – <clears throat> it, it it reminded me of so many things. One, um, one just that hey, we're, we're we're putting it all on the line. It was like watching an underdog basketball team fight the powerhouse, and just we're we're putting it all on the line. Like we're diving for loose balls, chin first to the floor. Like that's what it was, you know. And the rock hamming it. For those moments, I was like, fight. We own this company. We are this company. I was like, dude, you are leaning in, and I love it, man. I yeah. I love it, man. I love it. I hope this is not this is not the last of the final ball stage of the Rock. I know I he's got to start so. running the football league, but I, this has been so rewarding. It has because he's just being <clears throat> like such a jerk, and <clears throat> and it just felt like Seth was. Like a low key MVP, like everything he was doing was, I'm going to make sure that you win this match, Cody. And they yeah. kept stressing, hey, Seth only has anything to lose. Him and Roman have everything to lose because they're going in this match tonight, but tomorrow they've got to defend their titles. And it's like, yeah. that was a great little subplot going on in this big match where. Yeah, they really need to watch it. And Seth's getting his knee hurt. He's like, oh man, this is this is good stuff. He's not caring about himself. He's trying to help yeah. Cody get the win. He is and, putting himself on the line for this. And I was like, yeah. man, this is this is fantastic. Yes. I felt so invested in the story and where it was going. Like, what's gonna happen? Who knows? Stay tuned. And then finally, you know, they're going back. Cody, Cody Rock yeah. is like, Mama Rose. I'm like, listen, you shirk and <laughs> And they're going back. Everybody's hitting their finishers, and it's great. And Cody's got Roman locked up to hit the crossroads, pushes him back, and it rock cracks him so hard <laughs> with the belt. I was like, ow. Yeah. Yeah. And then he's like, I would take this son of a gun out, hit him with the rock bottom, did the people's elbow, got the pen. I was like, oh. And it was funny because early on, I was like, well, they got to win to make sure that we know there's going to be no interference from the bloodline. But I was like, nah, this is like war games where the bad guys have to win the coin toss because yeah. otherwise it's a mess. And I was like, yeah, yeah they've got to win. And I was like, well, how do they make this work so everybody still looks good? I felt like that was a perfect ending because it was like, well, that's clearly why he would lose taking that shot which you heard throughout that whole arena. Yeah, that would do it. And do just it. fantastic. And it, it it adds it added further to the whole narrative of Cody Rhodes versus Roman versus Bloodline. Um, there's always something standing in the way. There's always somebody doing something just to, to just to keep him out, just to keep right. him at the at the losing edge. And it played right into it, which yes. going into the next night. Yeah, and and man, one thing that I was really digging was just like how many callbacks I felt like they were doing because I don't know if you remember, of course I don't remember the numbers anymore, but when Cena fought Rock the first time at WrestleMania and Cena was all calling out Rock Iger on Hollywood, going to battle raps, he lost and he did this perfect camera angle where Cena's sitting in the middle of the ring you know and he's just like I can't believe I lost to this dude I'm supposed to be the guy this iteration of the WWE and I lost to the old dude who I said wasn't good enough to beat me and he's sitting there dejected and he did that same kind of shot with looking at Cody and he's like oh man I lost they show, they show Seth and Seth's like Man, we put everything we had on this and we still lost and went back to Cody. And in the background, you see the rock just like he was with Cena. You see on on Cody's other side of his other shoulder, because they're both like lined up perfectly, Roman. And it's like, yes, you can't beat the bloodline. You're done. 
and it's like a perfect cliffhanger. And it's like, oh man, we don't have to wait another month. We just go right into it the we next day. The next night. I'm gonna be honest, you know what I wanted to see, which would have counted that. Instead of that dejected look, I wanted to see rage out of God. Like I really want to see, I wanted to see that rage. Like, I mean, Wolverine, like, like I'm I want to rip your head off. I wanted to pe- people holding him back. I wanted to see that. That's not Cody's character. And I think for Cody, he's got to he's got to play in this. He does a perfect baby face because, you know, for Brock Lesnar, that's what Brock would do for Cody. It's shoot. The odds are against me again. I, I fought this dude at WrestleMania with that stuff. The bloodline rules not even being out there up front. And I lost to this dude. Now when it's all in open. He can do anything. And he's got the rock. How do I beat him? I've got 24 hours to figure it out. But that's why I wanted to see that nastiness. I wanted to see him rage mode. Like so, so by tomorrow, the it, the build up, that pot is boiling over. I wanted to see that. Like he's seething with anger. I'm ready. I'm ready. There's nothing that's gonna stop me from ripping your head off, Roman Reigns. That's what I wanted. Excuse me. All right. So then let's go right into night two. This time we kick off with Stephanie McMahon welcoming Stephanie Levesque welcoming us to WrestleMania, <laughs> the Triple H era. Okay, cool. World Heavyweight Championship match. Seth Rollins, Drew McIntyre. The entrances for both were so cool. We had the swords, and every time he's going, they had a perfect camera angle. The dudes kept lowering the swords every time he went past them. But then Seth brings the whole parade out and this outfit is even more outlandish than the one yes, from night one. He's and pimp. I just love it. He, yeah. He just comes through and is like having a good time. CM Punk's on commentary. And <laughs> McIntyre is just going at him right away. He's hitting with the finisher. And they have sold it so perfectly that Seth put everything on the line last night. And it was kind of, they stacked the odds against him further. He made it last night. He even has less time to recover than anybody else because he's the first match tonight. And, you know, eventually he can't hold out. And then Rollins, Rollins McIntyre hits one of the fifth Claymore, gets the win, and gets to celebrate and all that good stuff. But he's celebrating a little bit too long. He gets in CM Punk's face. Like, yeah, check this out. He tells the cameraman, <laughs> get a good shot. I want to hang this picture on my mantle. Like, this is amazing troll level stuff here. And he just won't go away. Punk trips him up, starts beating him with his arm <laughs> brace. It's like, this is this is great. This is old school. I can't yeah. stand you. And <laughs> when Damien Priest music hits, I'm like, ah, oh, this is a payoff of that. And Punk is gonna have even he's gonna have even more reason to be mad at Punk because now he has been cost the world title, which he does. He loses pretty quickly to Priest. <laughs> he's had the world title for a minute. And then he loses it just that fast. And what I thought was interesting here was because I wasn't sure which way they were going to go. I felt like this was the only uh, opportunity for them to have Priest come out and cash in. Yeah. I'm kind of not a fan of the money in the bank. I feel like they did it perfect. They did it too perfect the first time. <laughs> where Edge was the sleaziest sleaze ball who ever existed. And he waited. He told everybody, I can cash this in whenever. And when he did, when Cena survived everybody in this elimination chamber, yeah. and it was like, I would cash it in. I felt like they were never going to top that. They have never done a better payoff to Money in the Bank than that. And because it was the first one, everything else has been diminishing returns for me. So this one, I thought one interesting way they could have done Let's do a call back to Seth Rollins where he crashed the Rock and Bro- the Rock, Roman and Brock title match and he yep. stole the belt. I thought maybe they're going to do this and have Seth feel like, oh, that's what it's like on the other end of this. That would have been great, actually. Um, I wasn't mad at it because it, was it was a fun and funny match. But if that would have happened, man, why are we writing this thing? That would have been... <laughs> Oh my well, God, see, I, I think what I like about the way they did it, because when I was watching, that's what I thought they would do. But I felt like that way would have made Seth, like it would have been like him getting too much comeuppance when yeah. later on that comes better. 
So he's not directly impacted. It's Punk and McIntyre where all of that goes right there with them. Yeah. And then Priest, where does he go? Does he fight Seth Rollins or does he fight McIntyre? They've got an event in Glasgow. So maybe that's where McIntyre gets his win back and gets to hold the belt for a minute. Yeah. Then he's got Punk maybe, or he's got Rollins who will challenge him for the belt again. I like the fact that they made a big deal out of Rollins being sad and upset that he lost his title so often the old champ has just vanished like he hit a magic trick he hit a smoke pellet and he vanished but we saw the look of anguish like i lost and i worked so hard for this thing my body was beat up from last night there is so much you could try to read in to his expression and how he was looking at so i love that and it was like oh man night night two is off to a great start so let's see where we go next. Uh, then we get the street fight. Bobby Lashley, the Street Profits versus Final Testament. My favorite thing about this match was Snoop Dogg on commentary. That was it. That was it. I mean, I the match. <laughs> but I was like, I mean, the match was whatever, but oh, Snoop was just like, I can't hey, believe look, they're letting him just go like this. Snoop, Pat McAfee. Yeah. <laughs> I would let them. They could call anything as far as I'm concerned. That's something that I'm surprised, like ESPN or whoever hasn't tapped into yet. Like, look, get Snoop, because you saw how hilarious Snoop was with Kevin Hart. And that's Kevin Hart, you know? Uh-huh. Get him and Pat McAfee behind the mic for just one Monday night football game. And it doesn't have to be the main <laughs> broadcast. It can do the, it could be the, like the Manning cast. The Manning or something cast. Like that. Dude, <laughs> you are going to, that's going to be a number one hit, man. Trust me. Yeah, because Snoop was just, I want my girl to have my back if I'm going to fight. Like, <laughs> that's just <laughs> commentary, not going to get anywhere else. And I, I was no. loving it. All right, so the next up we get LA Knight, yeah, versus AJ Styles. Yeah. And yeah. I remember, you know, speaking of Drew McIntyre when he was in TNA and he was fighting all these different cats. He decided to create his own faction. Eli Knight, I think that was his name back Eli Drew, I think it was in in TNA. Anyway, I was like, this dude can talk. And if he could just be a pass- passable wrestler, he's good. Yeah. Yeah. And he could he was more than good enough. He was he was fine in the ring. And I wasn't shocked when he came to, to WWE and did this whole stick and people started responding to him because he can really talk. He can and talk. He's on the mic. He's second to none right now. Yeah, man. It's like, it, and sometimes all you need to do is be able to talk, and you can get by with bogus stuff. So his match with AJ was fine. It wasn't anything special, no. but I think it did what it needed to do. AJ made him look good. AJ mm-hmm. didn't dog it. So when mm-hmm. Eli, Eli, LA Knight got his big win, it felt like, okay. And then Pat McAfee's like, the streak's begun. <laughs> And look, if I don't know, I want, I'm not going to say if they're smart. I'm going to say if they want to utilize his biggest asset, which is him him on the mic, they're going to have to put him out there with people that are going to make him look good until he's a pay. But he's, it's like this at this stage, he's got to be past the age of 30. He's not going to become a better wrestler, right? He's not going to put on better shows and have better uh, in ring performances. So you got to utilize his best feature. And again, when it comes to that, more vignettes from these kind of guys, you know, put them out there and make their character shine. They don't have to always yeah. be in ring presence. Make them shine, man. Yeah, he he he's on a on a short track. He's forty one. Oh yeah, dude, it's it's a wrap. So he he's got to get pushed quicker than got to get pushed people. quicker. But that's yeah. the thing. He, you're not going to make a champion out of him because you can see the in-ring product ain't there. But what you want to do is give him a chance to shine. And I think the way to do that, like I said, being that man, give him a segment every week, Raw, SmackDown, whatever you do, but give him a segment. Give our truth a segment, either show, <laughs> and let them cook, man. Let them do their thing. Yeah, I think he'd be fine now. I think he's still got 10 years, but it's just... Oh, yeah. He's you not going to become an entertaining wrestler, though, and how they're using He's not going to become more entertaining. That's the thing about it. All right, so when we talked about this one, this next match, you were hyped to talk about it. It's U.S. title, 
Logan Paul, Kevin Owens, Randy Orton, Triple Threat. And what's funny, cool about this one, we got a call back to last night. Sami Zayn is in the at the end of the hall with the gorilla, gorilla position waiting on KO, waiting to, KO go. to come out. Now you get it. I was like, this was a really yeah. nice touch when they showed him in the back. I said, like, I wonder if they would have Sami Zayn. And when they did, I said, y'all are on it. This is great. Yeah, yeah. So, and, and then the match, and then Kevin Owens has ECW tights because they're in Philly or colors. And he's got a little ATV or whatever. And he's like, yo, Randy, you want to ride? And Randy's like, whatever, let's do it. And then they go down and, and Paul is like, yeah, y'all fight. And like, nah. And Paul is like Kurt Angle in that sense where he's like, oh, this is wrestling. Got it. Okay. Just give me a couple more matches. And I'll look like I've been here for 10 years. Yeah. He's so crisp. So good. He's yeah. a sleazy heel. And sleazy heels are the best heels because yeah, you just want to still get beat. He doesn't yeah. think he's the cool. He he thinks he's cool, but he's not trying to be. He's trying to be obnoxious, cool. Not I am the coolest guy I'm the here. Coolest guy. No, he look. I love the fact that he's leaning into the fact that you know you don't like me. Right. You didn't like me before I got here. I right. don't care. <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean. He didn't like him before he got here. He does not care. Exactly. And he's not only leaning into that, which is great. And, you know, my thing is always, if you're going to be a heel, if you're going to be a scumbag, be a scumbag, you know? Be all it. the way. Yeah, all the don't way. Don't be a mediocre scumbag. Mm -mm. Go all the way. And he's going all the way. He knows you don't like him. He doesn't care. But he's also showing, I've got chops, man. I'm going to be here for a while if he chooses to, like it or not. And I think so. that's going to help him lean into being a really great heel for the company. Man, he's gonna be really. He's already showing. He's already showing what he got, man. You're at WrestleMania. It's not. And then here's the thing. I had people saying, you know, um, early in the week, I was talking to about it, like, oh, it's just the hype of him. You know, he's an internet personality. He's this. He's that. Uh, they're just leaning into that hype, and I'm like, dude, if you've been watching him, no, you know, yeah, <laughs> you know, not. it's not just that. That helps fuel yeah. the fire. That helps to right. fuel the dislike of him. But this guy's on it, man. You yeah. cannot deny what he has. You cannot. He's not like K Fed fighting John Cena. This no, it's like no. Oh, I understand. K Fed was a great scummy heel <laughs> when he was fighting <laughs> Cena. He just couldn't <laughs> wrestle for anything. He understood that, but he was awesome in that. And in that listen, spot. this you know this makes me and this endures him to me even more because he could come out there and dog it and use his name and sell his sports drink and so yep. forth. But he's taking this serious and he's out there, and you know I can get. I'm willing to guarantee that you know anybody who's performing with this guy, anybody who's seen who's, who's work with working with him. Says no, he's serious about it. And he's putting the work in, and it's paying off. It's paying dividends. It's, it's visible. Yes, it's, it's, it is. It's not like a oh, he was so close. He's trying yeah. stuff he shouldn't because he doesn't. He's he's nailing those moves when he yeah. did that swan ton oh, into the swan ton. Into the, man, come on, man. I was like, this guy's been here for a while. Yeah. Oh wait, he's just been here like two years. Crazy. Yeah, like two years. Yeah. He's doing his thing and. I feel like whenever he loses the U.S. title, he's one that can easily slide against Cody. I'm sorry. Uh, the champion uh, later on. <laughs> Fight. No spoilers. So, yeah. So, we got that and good stuff. We got the WWE Women's title match. Bailey, EO, Sky. And this is what I was talking about earlier with Triple H learning from his mistakes. So, back in 2004. It feels, gosh, 20 years ago. Yeah. Randy Orton fought Chris Benoit for the WWF title. He beat him to become the youngest world champion. And the Raw afterwards, he's celebrating with Evolution again. Triple H gives him the thumbs down. Batista drops him. And then Evolution punks out Randy Orton. And I always felt like that was stupid. The name of the group was Evolution. The Evolution would have been Randy and Batista going, you old heads are holding this back. Now, maybe Flair stays with him because, like, oh, I got to get the rub from these young guys. But they should have punked out Triple H, beat him down, and kicked him out of Evolution, not the other way around. Right. This time, 
when that storyline presents itself again, Triple H figures out this is the better way to do it. I'm not involved, so I don't have a title state. This is clearly the better way to do it. EO Sky wins the title thanks to winning Money in the Bank. Bailey, the leader of damage control, is like, yay! But it's EO and Asuka and Carrie and Dakota who essentially kick her out of the group that she formed. And it's that whole evolution thing played out the proper way this time. And and Bailey's like, I'm going to get my payback. I'm going to get her. And, you know, I'm a huge Bailey fan because she's a Niners fan. I like Bailey anyway. And she's she's a, she's a nice diehard nice Niners fan. Added. Exactly. So we got her coming to the ring. And this is another great example of their awesome production. EO comes out like a freaking rock oh, star. Nice. And they hit yeah. shot this thing so well with the rest of damage controls flanking her. They're dancing to her music. And then she is coming with the hood and she is just wild walking down. And then yeah. they capture her just perfect where she's leaning into the ropes and the camera is going up to watch all of her swirling around, draping the belt and then raising it up. I was like, this production is so great here. Top notch. Top yeah, notch. Man. Awesome. And the match was really good too. Bailey's fighting hard. And EO is somebody who she's like Sabu kind of where when Sabu hit all his moves, it was like, oh man, but Sabu didn't always hit his moves. This night yeah. she hit everything. She looks so crisp and clean. Yeah. She has the cockiness down. Yeah. And like when she's doing her promo and her translator, she seems like such an evil character. It's awesome because she sounds so cool and cold. I was never your friend, Bailey. It is just like, man, she's yeah. great at it. And you know, the like subtitles it just it, yeah. Like she and it, she's it a character it's like a movie. Yeah. And she's not a giant like Rhea Ripley or Bianca Belair or Jane Cargill. But she carries herself like a evil boss, like a mid-tier boss or something, where it's like, this one's going to be a pain to beat because she's going to be a problem. But, you know, Jeff, like we said earlier, everybody does not have to be the Hulk. And you need the, it, it's the different personalities, body types, skill sets, all of those things that make the company, right? It makes anything. Like, hey, you know, just talking on like football, basketball, something like that. But a league full of LeBron James is not fun. Right. <laughs> you know what I mean? A league full of LeBron James is not fun. You need these guys like a, 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 a joker who comes down and he's shaped like a dad. You know, he's, he looks like a dad playing pickup on a weekend and he's dominated. You need those kind of people, you know, and the same thing in wrestling. Everybody doesn't need to be Rhea Ripley or, 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 nope. or, 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 or Jade or, who, you know, whoever. You need these people like, you know, who is like, I'm a calculating supervillain. Don't F with me, you know. <laughs> I just, I, I, you I've been a big fan of EO since she was in Lucha Underground. And then when yeah. she came over to NXT, because I just feel like she is so cool. And whether that's yeah. as a face or a heel, she just has that. She's special, especially when she's on top of her moves. And it's like, oh man, oh, yeah. she's awesome. Oh, so, yeah. big fan of hers. Good match. It was nice to see Bailey get a big win. At yeah. WrestleMania, paid off that storyline that they had developed for months and months and months. Good ending. It was time for the main event. And this was paying off, not just last year, but several years of WrestleManias and everything in between. This is another epic read long match, but I didn't care because I wanted to see what the end result was. So yeah. this was 33 minutes, 33 or 33 minutes and 34 seconds. They were off just by a second. Because that had been 33, 33 would have been perfect. 33 would have been, yep. So the first half is basically Roman just dominating, and Roman is talking so much trash. He yes, made it he is. Me. Oh, man. When he when he hit the crossroads, he was like, man, this move I really want to embarrass him. Yeah. He was like, I knew this move wasn't going to pin him. This move doesn't beat anybody. I was like, oh. And look, you <laughs> look, that's part of my the joy of Roman as this heel as he's been a heel. Is oh, that yeah. oh yeah, he's he's a trash toy. He's he's degrading you in the middle of your match. 
And right. he does it in such like a condescending way. I, I love how condescending it is. Like, you, you're garbage, dude. Get out of here. I love it. I love it. And they do that in the middle of a championship match yeah. with somebody you got this bad blood for, man. Like, right, oh, right, dude. right. It was. I was <laughs> loving that. But I, I was cracking up when he said, this move is trash. trash. It can't beat anybody. I was like, wow, <laughs> man. That was, so that was low. Ball, like, right, right. He, I, I was just having some fun. Like, they just right. disrespecting this guy totally, man. Paul is laughing. Like, yeah, I, I, I loved it, man. I was fire. I loved yes. it. Yes. So we got to the point where it's like, uh-oh, it's all about to hit the I man now. It. So Cody's finally got him in position. And then Jimmy Uso comes out. It's like, oh, you suck. Because it was like, he's you about to pin him. It's like, he... Dang. It's like he's not gonna pin him because we haven't seen the bloodline come out. But it, the Jimmy coming out was still like, oh. And then Jay comes through. The Yeats going excited. Jimmy goes out to the ring. Yeah. And they are fighting on the ramp. We get a spear. It's like, oh man, that was more exciting than their entire match. And I was just yes, cool. it was. And it's like back to the match, and they're going back and forth. Cody's got him one more time, and his solo comes out of nowhere. And I feel like their pr- production again shine because we're not seeing all this interference. We're not seeing we're not it seeing. coming. Yep. We're seeing it right when it's one, two. Whoa, where'd he come from? And he's just like, wow. Yep. And Solo is talking. Whoa, come on. I know. Shut up. It's like, listen, <laughs> I got this. <laughs> Who's you? And then they hit him with the death combo. Roby is a spear. Solo is a spike. It's like, that's it. Cody yes. kicks out. The fans are losing their minds. Solo's like, all right, what I got to do now? And all of a sudden, da, 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 da. It's like, what? Cena John comes running Cena's down. Music. And it's so great because Solo took out Cena a while back and it's like, ah, we're paying this off. Cena this off. takes Solo out with the attitude adjustment. It's like, yes. And then the final boss music hits. It's like, oh, man. And again, Cena's we get still. the we get the Cena shot and, and Rock is on the ramp and it's like, man, this is great. Y'all are like watching it like it's a movie. How do we get all these callbacks, these and Easter the, eggs to our previous movies? Hey, yo, Jeff. Hold on, hold on one sec, Jeff. I'm yep. sorry. I didn't mean to cast. All right. All right. So, yeah. The Rock came out like show enough in the Last Dragon, man. It wasn't just the, <laughs> it wasn't just the outfit; it was the attitude, man. He came out there. I mean, he snarled. He's and and, and seen us selling like, oh god, what did I do? Like, <laughs> right, right, like ah, I didn't think this through. <laughs> and he makes his way out there, man. And the Rock is the final boss, man. They. They got to find a way to keep this going for at least a few more months, man. Do not shelve yeah. this because it's working and it's doing miracles for everybody involved. Man. Exactly. And we I have the WrestleMania it. 18 call out with Hogan and Rock doing the face off and then turning. Yeah. We got that with Cena and Rock. It's like, this yeah. is good. And they did that back in their thing too. And we're seeing it's like, all right, whatever. And then Rock catches him, Rock bottom. And Rock is all like, now it's time, Cody. I'm going to get you Mama Rose. Mama the lights Rose. drop. Oh, the, belt, like, the, the lights belt. went out. What? Now, I'm going to say this before we go for, further. If the lights would have went dark, now, I'm not mad at the payoff, but had we heard glass break, the hey, look, they'd have had to put a lid on uh, Lincoln Financial for the lid to come off. Oh, my fault. My fault. I, I'm saying this out of order because I want to I'm going to address what you said. All right. But so Rock is like he just put down Cena. We get the Shields music. And I'm like, oh, what's up with John Moxley's contract over at AEW? Seth Rollins comes out in Shield gear, but he's still so beat up that he can't do anything. Roman comes out and kills him. And like we yeah. haven't seen Roman in like five minutes. And he is just like, ah, like super rage. And he takes out Seth Rollins. And Superman punch and and he's down. And now it's like, it's on. Then the lights go out. And to your point about Stone Cold, and I've read this a lot. People are like, oh, it should have been Stone Cold. It shouldn't have been. Because 
this is all about this layered storytelling. And it's like, we've never seen it on this level to this degree with WWE before. It was Roman who took out Undertaker at WrestleMania and beat him. And this is his opportunity to pay him back. And he gets to screw over Paul Heyman because it was a Paul Heyman dude, Brock Lesnar, who beat him for the streak at WrestleMania. So now he gets to end Roman's streak by coming out here and helping out Cody. So he choke slams Rock, and he's like, "Nope, I'm out of here. I'm not gonna do. I'm not gonna touch Roman. But what I'm gonna do is even better. Putting a chair down Put in the, the middle of the right ring. There. Yep. And this was the coup de gras to this whole thing, the culmination of this storyline that's been built up all this time, all these WrestleManias ago. The chair's in the middle." Roman is the only one standing, and he sees the chair. He looks at Cody. I'm about to wrap you up, boy. Then he turns. Seth Rollins is in his shield gear, and he he forgets everything. Everything except for that moment when they're in the shield, and Seth Rollins has that chair, and he's like, oh, I'm going to get you so you know how it feels. And he just smacks up. And Seth is Man. down again. He has got no offense in. But he takes this shot. Roman is all, ha, I took care of you. Ooh, <laughs> uh. Cody kicks him because he's had enough time to recover. Because he would yep. not have had that time to recover unless Seth Rollins shielded him from the chair shot. The chair then shot. he hits him with three crossroads, gets the pin, and then we get... To me, the perfect ending with it, Michael Cole is finish the story. It's not one, two, three. It's just finish the story. That was perfect. Samantha Urban, who is awesome with oh, her dramatic awesome. reintroduction, she's she's like wow. Yeah, that her voice was cracking with the emotion. It was like, hey, look, that's awesome. Emmy worthy, right? That was Emmy worthy, right. right there. She was on it. She was selling how important it was. You Brandy God. comes out to kiss Cody. And it's like, this is, you guys got it. You Every gotta bit. make these moments, man. And look, we, we talk about manufacturing versus making moments. They made moments. They didn't manufacture them. They only tried to manufacture one. And, but the rest of these moments were just classy, class act moments, man. They, they The stories you, created the moments. And exactly. Man, the payoffs it, were it, so It doesn't so work the other way around. The moments don't not. create the story. It's it, it man, the payoff was so sweet for each of these big matches, especially for the main event. Yeah. And that's what you want. You don't want a main event where you, your audience is kind of like, eh, take it or leave it. You want these main events where you're like, hey, this was some of the best I've ever seen. This is amazing. Absolutely. And we got the old school NWA and then WrestleMania 10 conclusion where all the good guys come out to congratulate him everyone that roman had fought it beat down through the bloodline interference he has seth well we had seth already we had kevin owens Sami Zayn, jay randy orton everybody paul came out la Knight. so like the who's who that he is taking down with the bloodline all came out to celebrate it was awesome and he was thanking everybody hugging everybody called out triple h brother love yeah but to me i was like oh man i really hope they get enough time for this and don't cut it like they did sting's retirement speech at aw yeah that was stupid because we got the moment that i thought really wrapped everything up with the storyline that they had been building where he where seth was walking getting carried out to the back from Sam Zane slowly because he's in pain and Cody goes, I owe you. And I was like, I felt that because these two went to war together. Seth was like, I will be your shield because I helped create this monster that is Roman Reigns and I am partly to blame for this. He's going to get worse if he beats you. So I'm going to be the shield. And he was the shield. He took that final death shot from Roman so Cody could beat him. And Cody thanked him, and it wasn't this big embrace hug. It was, "Hey man, we yeah. survived this because of you." And he was like, "Better by epic handshake." It, would it was, <laughs> man. It was it, that was where we got the the mega powers handshake, and it was so much better than a hug because it yeah. was like, "Yeah, dude, we went to war, but we did yeah. it." 
and I could not have done it without you. And I felt yeah. like it was so fitting that Seth was in his shield war togs because yeah. this was going to trigger was Roman. Awesome. You've got my shield. Oh, man, it was awesome. So I loved everything about that payoff, everything. And again, I feel like they got so lucky. The fans are like, we don't want to see Rock in this main event. We want to see Cody. And it led to Rock going, you know what? I can make this work too. And we got the epic payoff. You know, and that right there, like you said, we don't need to see the these these guys who had their moments in the sun still continuing to loom omnipresent over. We need these guys like and look, Cody and a young guy, he's paid his dues. He's been around, right? But we need to have these guys carrying the torch because this is how the show doesn't get stagnant. This is how things don't get stagnant. All right. Yeah, you, this is how things don't get stagnant in the pro, the, any promotion, right? Especially the biggest promotion of all. <clears throat> you can't keep relying on your biggest names from your 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 pre- previous heydays. You you have to allow the new generation to establish themselves, and it's great to call back to. The familiar faces, the folks we grew and and, and know to love, um, but you have to let the younger generation establish themselves so that the promotion can continue to to evolve and grow. And you get new stars. You this is how you build your stars. This is how you build them up and make sure that they last. Right? You can't keep calling back to the guys who had their heydays years ago. And I'm I'm so glad to see that. Even with bringing back The Rock, it's been fun, <clears throat> but he's not the main character here. He's not the 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 the, the sole focal point. It wasn't about solely The Rock. He added a great element to this story, but it wasn't all about him. We knew who the the main characters were. We knew who was. Yeah, go ahead. The main villain. So I think what happened, they could have finished Cody's story at last year's WrestleMania. And they could have kind of like, all right, Cody's going to get a chance to finish his story. But the rocks involvement gave it a whole new life to make this last home stretch meaningful beyond <clears throat> they're fighting each other again. It was this huge mammoth. Oh yeah. no, you're not. Wait, I was, I, I was, Nope, I'm here. You're not going to take my spot. I'm the guy. And I'm the rock, and you can't say anything because I'm the rock. And right. you know, Seth Rollins promos like, nope, I'm tired of these people who just come over and look down on us. We've been busting our butts all this time, and yeah. we're just like, yeah. And I read people going, This is like Avengers Endgame. And I agree with it because you had to have been following, just like you had to watch all those movies before yeah. Endgame to appreciate it. Like to you can watch Infinity War. Or- and in game, like, oh, that was a cool two part thing. But if you watch from Iron Man all the way through, it felt so much more rewarding. And yeah. we have our cap in Cody, who's wearing stars and stripes. And we got Seth Rollins, who's Iron Man, who has been the cause of so much problems anyway. But he's like, no, I've got to fix this problem, this monster I've created with Roman. And I'm going to do whatever it takes, including taking a chair shot, losing my title. To fix this and to right he this wrong that I've done. Oh, he was Tony Stark. That's a yeah, great man. Snap. And I just love that because I was like, man, this is the the underappreciated element of this story. The involvement of the rock, the involvement of Seth Rollins, because yeah, rematch would have been fine. And it would have been like, Yeah, y'all could have just done this last year. But adding these two right. other elements put in so much more to take it over the yeah. top. And to make everything it made it rewarding. totally different. It made it something totally different. It made, or it gave, and this is something that, you know, we're talking about wrestling no more, right? Yeah, it goes without saying, of course. But we're talking about wrestling. And I say that because we're not supposed to have stories. This is a, uh, this harkens me back to 30, 40 plus years, more than 30 years ago when stories really, really mattered, when developing stories and characters and and drawing on emotions really, really mattered. If you look at some of this 
the the old NWA and, and, and WWF stuff, man, it wasn't just about some big guy coming in here and wrecking shop or anything like that. Stories matter. You were invested in wrestlers and their storylines and the production values. It was soap operas. It was drama. It was everything. And, you know, it kind of took me... The, <clears throat> Everything with Cody Rhodes, especially after the Rocks promo last uh, Raw, <laughs> which had people like the a promo made the newswire like the mainstream newswire like what the hell happened like the Rock was, like what is going on like yeah no the camera goes off pump that I say we're so yeah it's like oh, people man. were afraid like this is what. It, it reminded me of um, I'm just trying to pull some storyline like uh, uh, the the Randy Savage Miss Elizabeth. Uh, oh God, I'm trying to think of a, a really good one where people were like, "Okay, this is blurring the lines of reality." You know, like is this for real? Like, is is what's going well, on? I, I mean, the whole Austin and McMahon thing where I can't stand my boss, my boss can't stand me. A lot yeah. of people can relate to that, and. Yeah. They're just things where it's like it resonates. Oh, you're you're trying to check my girl? No. Oh, no. yeah, you are. I see that lust in your eyes. Hey, man, you never gave me a title shot. You never asked for one. You never asked for one. You didn't pick up the call, the phone when I was trying to call you to get my back. Yeah. I yeah. was busy working out. Stuff like that can work in any situation. Oh, it just happens to be wrestling. Yep. That's the difference because. For so many years, it's been hokey stories or, hey, let's see who can wrestle the best match and be the most athletic. Nobody cares about that. Nobody cares. We've got people into wrestling back in the Hulkamania day, the Attitude Era. Mine, she well, there's stories. Uh, yeah. yeah. They care. Oh, I'm a bigger patriot than you. I don't care about you and your flag. Yeah, I'm not going to buckle down. I mean, it's just. You You're can, not going to come you know, and disrespect America, you know, that kind of. Right. You can always tie the best moments of wrestling to great stories. Great stories. Uh oh. Oh man, my dude is getting beat up by three dudes. Let me get the one guy who I think who can take care of three dudes. I don't care if it's a guy that my boy has been fighting all this time. I know we can take him. Yep. Hulk Hogan? What? Huh? Yeah. Hey, you you saved me from these three dudes. All right, hey. brother. Well, I, I I guess I owe you a debt of gratitude. And oh man, the Mega Powers. Hey, Mega Powers, epic handshake. And here we go. We got a whole nother storyline now. Yeah. The, oh, I'm so paranoid story. about losing my title. I'm going to take this ring bell against your throat to make sure you don't get me again. Yeah. Just, like these, it's, those it's, moments, those moments go, they live on in wrestling history. And yeah. this is, um, now there have been a couple over the years, I and mean, somebody, a lot of people argue me down, um, but this one was one that went beyond just those who follow. Right? If you're a casual and you stumbled across this over the last two years, you're invested. Yes. That's the thing, because it's like, oh, one of the biggest action movie stars is doing wrestling. I never yeah. knew he was in wrestling. <laughs> you got those people, and Logan then Paul's a wrestler. Right, you've got people who are like, Oh, the rock's a bad guy again. He's Let me bad tune guy. in. I've never heard the rock say the F word, right? And and instead of doing some hokey, well, this is the best we could do, he exceeded what we've come to expect from them. Under Man, that last yeah. run of Vince McMahon, I was like, Dude, what are you yeah. doing? You know, and Triple look, H is like, I can make this better. Let's do With it. All due respect to Vince, you know. I'm not giving Vince respect. I, I, got I don't have a you. urinal around here. Oh God. I <laughs> I I I'm gonna put some respect on Vince's name, of course, because he got it here. You know, he got it here. Um, but Triple H was the man needed to bring it to the next level. Like under his guidance, this is going wrestling's gonna it's I think it's gonna have another 80 style heyday. I think WWE is going to have another 80 style heyday because he gets it. He understands he's got all the right people involved. Um, and you've got a generation of new young wrestlers coming up, man, through the NXT. Your wife's like, I wish boxing would take a page out of WWE because, you know, boxing is pretty much privatized itself completely out of, of focus. 
where you don't know who the next up and coming boxers are. You don't you can't even watch boxing for what it's worth. Whereas the WWE is so accessible. Whereas you're watching from NXT through Raw to SmackDown. I wish they did Saturday night main event shows again uh that were televised, but that's probably overkill. Um but you're seeing storylines develop, wrestlers develop, you're seeing uh wrestlers move up the ranks. You're seeing all of that. The only thing, the only thing that might make things better than they are is if AEW said we're going all in and going in direct competition. We're recreating the Monday Night Wars or the Friday Night Wars. Same time, we're going for it. I want to see, because that competition drove so much entertainment. It, 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 you had to outdo the each other. The problem is <clears throat> that WWE... I don't know if they ever really felt the crunch of the competition from AEW, but no, Triple H is like, I can make this better, and I'm going to just act like they're sort of competition. I don't even care if they reference AEW in our commentary. They're in our competition, and they keep proving that week after week because AEW is pulling out these dream matches with no story. With no story. The ratings keep going down. Like They're bringing in these great stars who you know, you what know I said do, Jeff? was that? They're bringing stars because they can pay them. This is what I think should happen. You know how the USFL and XFL just teamed up to create a super spring league? (laughs) And the football is pretty good. It's still a pretty good product. I think what should happen, and this would be totally canon, the behind the scenes, you you viewer, you don't know this happened. It it would be impossible to keep it from, but the WWE should purchase AEW. Or they should come to some (laughs) kind of agreement to where, look, we're, we're 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 merging, but not really. So we're we're comp- we're creating our own competitor, and you don't try to recreate those raw uh, versus uh, nitro wars, but you're recreating the raw versus nitro wars. You don't try to harken back to those storylines and rehash it, but you basically say, hey, one we're we're now in competition with you guys and we're competing for your eyeballs but we win anyway because we control both sides of the curtain right <laughs> I, I i think that would I, I think that would work i think that would work and try to and, and, and it would help aw get some footing it would help aw but i don't see the benefit for wwe at this point honestly if it's under your umbrella, but people and it's hard. There's, there's, I'm, 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 I'm talking out of my ass. I mean, I want that to be. I want to see those kind of raw wars again. Yeah, you want to, you want a good number two to bring yeah. WWE to another level. To take I think it to the problem is level. they had their shot during the pandemic, and yeah, they did because. WWE was so far behind the curve with their presentation, and AW was like. Well, if no one else can be here, then what we could do is just have our wrestlers be the crowd. And yeah. it took WWE months to go, oh, let's do video screen. So long. But it was like, oh, yeah, we could do that. Well behind the curve on that. And AEW felt really fresh. It felt like they were doing it different did. stuff. Stadium stampede. It was like, oh, this is so cool. And then when crowds came back, super stacked. That momentum was gone, and they just were like, let's bring in more people. Here's Brian Danielson, and here's Adam Cole, Daniel Bryan. It just got where are you going from there? They they didn't know. I don't think they knew. They just he had no direction, and it was just like, okay, and you can bring out all the dream matches you want, but. People want stories, and it's been clear as WWE's ratings have gone up and AEW's oh, have yeah. gone down. People don't care about the wrestling so much as they do a good story to suck them in. You know, it's funny. AEW thought that they could just add to their roster and it would work itself out. People want to see these names. They want to see these folks wrestle, these names that they know. Yeah, but what what is the reason for us watching? What's the reason for this match? You're just why pitting them against. Why are they fighting? You know, right. you can't just pit people against each other and expect it to work because of that. There has to be more. There has to be more engagement, and they never mm-hmm. figured that out. They still have. Yeah, like I feel like during the pandemic, they had stories, and it was like, oh, okay, but I feel like he's gotten away from it, and and there's that thing of like you know. A really good wrestling booker, even the best, has like three to four years 
before they burn out and can't come up with original stuff. And if there's no yeah. one there to replace them, it's just stagnant. And that's what's happened because they've had the same Booker, Tony Khan. He's past that three year, four year mark. And you can see he has nothing, no fresh ideas. This, this is when he needs to have a new writer come in with new ideas. Maybe his version of Triple H, who writes. But Tony's not a good writer. He never was. But at least at the early point, he had guys who were hungry, who were like, oh, man, let me come in here. And he's got guys from New Japan and WWE. Mm -hmm. and they're like, all right, who can I fight? And, oh, great, I've got all these people for you to fight. But nobody cares. Nobody like, cares. Right. Edge and Christian again up. as Adam Copeland versus Christian Cage. Hey. Okay, but, that's cool. All right, cool, but mm, I'm not invested in any way. That's their problem. That's the yeah. part. That's so the they part. get the writing and the storyline down. Yeah, that's the this part. Gonna be WWE. You have to figure out. Yep, you got to figure that part out. You have to make the people invest in the product. You have to be invested in the product. Otherwise, we're just watching matches. Right. Well, Devon, hey, listen, so Raw is going on as we're talking, as is the national championship game. So I guess we should wrap it up. We'll watch both. And then on Wednesday, we'll, we'll do a little five, ten minute uh, catch up on Raw. Sounds good to me. All right, man. Thank you so much for, for Anytime, tagging buddy. in, getting the hot tag so we can talk about WrestleMania 40. Thank you Anytime, all out there so much for watching this episode of Lyle's Movie Files. Has been filed.